This video is going to go through some ways that you can test the pectoralis major and look for muscle length and muscle tightness. Max Wardell, Carter Kowalczyk from the Overhead Athletic Institute. We're going to go through some different ways to assess parts of the pec major as well as a couple active assessments that you can do on your own. So I got them here on the table. I'm going to come around. We're going to look bilaterally. What I want to see is how he moves through different ranges of motion. So first I can take him through a passive assessment. I'll take the table up here just a little bit. We know that the pec attaches here and it actually fans across the clavicle as well as the costal cartilage. So it kind of covers a wide distance and you can have lines of tightness or stiffness in particular ranges based on how you throw or how you move. So we want to make sure we're testing everything. If I want to test the lower fibers, I can take Carter down towards the table this way and then I can drop him into external rotation. I got to keep in mind that the pec may limit this, but it also may be limited by the shoulder capsule and other soft tissues around the shoulder. So I really have to count on my end range assessment. Does it bounce? What does it feel like? Is it elastic? And then I also have to rely on the subjective um, assessment of the athlete if he feels a stretch when I do it or if he doesn't. They may feel a pinch in the shoulder. They may feel some apprehension because I'm close to those positions. I want to take him to here. And generally, if they can access, you know, a little bit of external rotation and in that maximally horizontally abducted position, then I'm going to say that's long enough, but I also want to assess their seated posture, which is something we'll do next because synergistic dominance of this muscle could lead to a forward posture of the shoulders, especially if the pec, major, or pec minor is tight as well and pulling on that uh, coracoid process. So I'll go there. I can combine this with my internal rotation assessments with my flexion assessments differentiating between lat and teres major. And we've done a couple videos on latissimus dorsi. So check out how we assess that. We use a lot of uh, active tests where you could do it yourself um, or you could, you could do it as a clinician. But we also go through some different um, lat length and lat stretching um, techniques in those videos as well as we have some exercises for the lats. So I can combine these look here. Now I'm going to look here down at the lower fibers. Keep in mind that when I look at these lower fibers, I want to do less external rotation, more horizontal abduction. So I have to make sure that the patient's on the edge of the table. So scoot over towards me. And the reason for this is because when I take them below 90 degrees and I want to look at the clavicular portion, I'm not going to have as much external rotation as I go more into horizontal abduction because of how the shoulder articulates. So from here, I want to bias him into external rotation, and then I want to take him into horizontal abduction. If I'm getting, you know, 30, 45 degrees like I am here, I'm going to say he's probably not too tight, but I also want to feel what I feel here. I want to make sure that I'm not putting him in a position where he's feeling some sort of impingement or apprehension in his shoulder as well. So I'm always asking the patient what they feel or the baseball player what they feel. I'm assessing it, kind of let it bounce. I can even let it drop a little bit, see what happens. You know, the arm is heavy, so I don't want to do this in someone that's super acute. Then I can have them scoot to the other side and do the same thing. Pec major typically isn't tight unless there's been a lot of heavy weight lifting. A lot of baseball players are on that. I'm going to move it around. I'm assessing all areas of the range, and that's what we kind of talked about before with how the muscle sits. More external rotation, more horizontal abduction, comparing side to side, and doing it here supine can be good because it can kind of limit a little bit of the mobility of the scapula and kind of preclude it from 
moving a lot. But I also want to do it standing and with movement from him, which is going to be the most important part, and that's what we're going to show you right here. So I'll have a, the baseball player sit on the edge of the table here and just ask him to get nice and relaxed, sit normal, and look straight forward. Now from here, I'm going to look at do they have an anterior tilt to their scapula where they sit farther forward? Are they rounded out farther? Do they have more of a shoulder forward posture? So go ahead and show that for them really quick. Kyphotic, forward shoulders. From here, you can even have them, you can demonstrate, so stay there, Carter, and demonstrate the same stretch and say, look how much farther you can't get because your shoulder is too rotated forward or too uh, directed forward and your scapula are too tilted that way and you don't have the same amount of mobility. So I'm really looking at that. This may indicate some more um, pec minor tightness, which we're going to show you guys um, in another video. But while they're here, I can then have them stand up. So go ahead and stand up. We can do an active assessment. So he's going to face that direction. From there, I'm going to have him have his elbows slightly in front of his chest. This is one you can do at home if you're an athlete. So elbows, just relax a little bit. So he's gonna get his elbows out front of his chest as opposed to back here. He's then gonna turn back as far as he can towards the wall. From there, he's going to bring his shoulder blades together in the back. As someone watching this, I'm gonna look for how far does he get back? How far do his shoulder blades come back? how much ER does he have or external rotation. And then just as Carter did, he changed the angle so you can look at the fibers that are directed more down here. Or I can have him bring his arms down to the side, externally rotate as far as he can, and then pull his shoulder blades back, looking more here. And then he's ultimately gonna tell me which side feels tighter. Does he feel tightness one side to the other? And I'm looking at the global range of motion, does he get all the way back? A lot of times pec major is not that tight, um, but if you're doing a lot of weightlifting or you're seeing an athlete that's done a lot of weightlifting, they can become really kyphotic and this can limit how hard they can throw and this can even cause impingement and other issues in the shoulder, which may lead downstream to the elbow. So it's important to assess not only their passive range of motion, but their active range of motion. And I'll generally go to these tests after I've taken them through some other tests and I may even feel, do they have high tone here? If I see a posture that, that looks like it may be um, directed towards a tighter anterior um, pec system tightness. So if I see tightness, I'm gonna assess it. Or if I see a poor posture, I'm gonna assess it. But in general, this may not be something you use all the time, but if you have poor posture, it's definitely worth checking out. If you do have tightness here, check out our videos on lat stretching or uh, pec stretching. Check out our one on lat stretching as well. But uh, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future videos. And we're gonna have some more on exercises as well as assessments, stretches, um, all, all sorts of stuff for you guys. Um, so hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.